Cancer, hello, beautiful soul, how are you? My name is Alicia, welcome, this is Empath Tarot, where spirit's messages directly correlate with being highly sensitive here on planet Earth. Now, this is going to be a general reading, so if it does resonate, like, share, and subscribe so we can get spirit's message out there to fellow empaths. For more clarity on your situation, pop on over to your sun, moon, and rising signs. And if you're interested in receiving a personal reading with myself and spirit, all of the details are going to be down in the description box below. Along with my husband, if you have not yet, check him out. He's over at 7D Tarot. And be sure to stick around until the end of this reading. We are going to be pulling a final message from your angels. Let's dive right in. Cancer, here's the dealio, right? Okay, so when we are... When we are super attached, okay, to a particular outcome, uh, finances increasing, uh, finding our purpose, losing weight, um, being healthy, attracting soulmate, right? When we are, can't stop thinking about getting something, what we're doing is you've essentially, because your heart has, in your higher self, it, 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 see, spirit and, and the spirit realm and the law of attraction already knows what you actually want, right? So when you get that first impulse to do something, oh, wow, I would love to start a website, right? Let's say that happens. Oh, I'd love to start a website. I'd love to start this new business. I'd love to be of service, whatever it is. You get that excitement, right? And then the difficulty is generally what happens is when we're really attached to that outcome, we keep thinking about it. Oh, I wonder how I'm going to get it done. I wonder when I'm going to be able to do it. I wonder, oh, oh my gosh, well, uh, I don't have time. I don't have any time. Well, it's like we start to like work ourselves up. And then what happens is we've launched our desire to the universe, but we're holding on to it. So it's like every time we think Think about it we're holding on to it once the once you kind of already know what you want right financial freedom a career where you're in service where you're respected by your peers right happiness when you go to work happiness amongst your family so you can wake up in peace right these things that we all desire it's already known the universe is like 100 like we're behind you 100 you don't need to try you don't need to think about it you don't need to force this or make it happen and when we feel like our manifestations are not going to show up for us because we keep thinking about how they're not here yet, then all that does is put us in an energy where we are where we think we have to do more than is necessary. Well, maybe if I scheduled my day so I got this. Well, maybe if I did this. Well, maybe if I did that. It's like we exhaust ourselves by not staying focused on one sort of path, one sort of trajectory, you see? And so, you know, usually when we're really attached, we feel like we have to do more, right, than is necessary. Again, that exhausts us as we're really impulsive. In, for instance, let's say you wanted to lose weight and you got this download that you wanted to eat this certain way, these certain foods, right? And you did it for two days. And then because you're in your own head about, well, is this going to work? Is this not going to work? Well, maybe if I did this, or oh, maybe if I ate less, then I would get better results faster. Hmm? That's a big one, right? But then you feel awful because you're not eating enough. And then you eat more, you binge because you went in your own head thinking, if I did less than what I actually know I need to do, you see? So it's always about really getting in tune with, again, what the truth is in your heart and not getting upstairs in your own head because all that's going to do is produce a lot of fear and a lot of frustration because you're just going to be flip-flopping everywhere. There's not going to be enough focus. So what we want you to attune to, very important at this time, first of all, take some rest. Take some rest from whatever it is that you've been looking to achieve, whether it's career, whether it's um, you know health, whatever it may be. Take a rest, literally sleep, okay? Whenever we're in such a state, it's better to just sleep it off, right? So sleep, meditate, stillness, but give yourself permission to let go, okay? And then we want you to attune, okay? to what actually you want to do, not what you think you should do, not what others are doing that has worked, not what you feel frantic about making happen. What is it in this moment feels easy for you, feels exciting for you, feels for, you feel capable of doing, feels feel, you feel ready for, right? This is what you want to look for, these kinds of things, right? It's like if you wanted to like lose weight, but you're at the gym every single day and you're exhausted. But realistically, you're like, well, honestly, like with my life right now, if I could just kind of do like a 20 minute workout, maybe like some stretching, like that would be so nice. That's the truth. That's the truth. And that's going to get you the results you're looking for. You see, that's why we want you to shine your light. We want you to make sure you're tuning into what you want to do, not what you think you should do. Because when you tune into what you want to do, you start to live your truth and you start to live authentically. And when you live authentically, that's when everything you desire shows up for you. The finances, the career changes, the 
the love life, whatever it is, the respect from your peers. When you live your life based upon your intentions and your desires, that is you aligned with the plan that you've already set for yourself before you've come here. So try not to get too caught up in what's best because sometimes us empaths, we're perfectionists and we try to do what's best for us and what's best for everything and just what's best and we get all freaked out in our perfectionism. And the universe is saying, you're guided by what feels good for you in that moment, by what is your truth. It's like if your family was having dinner and they called you to dinner and you just didn't feel like eating, you were in your moment, you were in your flow state, you didn't want to eat what they were eating, you just weren't in that moment, right? At, the, at that time, right, what would be what's best? Well, your ego is going to say, I don't want to go there. I don't want to eat these foods. I don't want to be around these people. I just want to be in my own world. But the energy might irritate your family. And then you may feel that irritation and that, that disrespect from your family. So what do you do? You say to yourself, all right, I'm going to go and acknowledge that they're desiring my company. I'm going to be my best self. I'm going to not eat just because the food is there. Maybe I'll put a plate out of small amounts. I don't necessarily need to eat it. I don't necessarily need to, you know, do it just because it's there. And then, you know what, when I come back the whole time at the dinner table, I'm just going to be engaged in the conversation, sure. And pleasing them, but then I'm going to come back and I'm going to, I'm going to take action on this. You see, so there's always, it's always about deciding what energy is going to serve you. And for instance, like I'll give you an example, right? Someone's walking down the street and they're walking on your side of the street, right? You could do two things. You could, you could walk right into them, ego styled up, right? And be like, this is my side, right? And prove your point, right? But notice how that feels back because anytime we do something with an ego, we get it back tenfold. So when in this game of life, try to look at everything you do as what will leave the energy feeling the most at ease, the most peaceful, the most grounded. And generally that's going to be just stepping out of the way and not even having your ego active, right? When it comes to working on our creations and what's best for us, it, it's really about going to be what keeps the energy feeling nice and easy. So if you're having nine to five, but you want to start some other career, stressing about it and thinking about it isn't going to keep the energy good. It's going to be like, all right, well, I'm at this nine to five right now. It's not going to be like this forever. How, what is it that I feel called to do though outside of this nine to five hours? And how can I feel energetic enough that I desire to, to work on my creations outside of my nine to five? That's really where you want to set your tone to. And then you're going to realize, ah, okay, so if I eat these foods, I get really tired and then I don't want to do anything after I get home from work. Oh, if I go to the gym, I feel rejuvenated. If I go for a walk in nature, even though I don't want to after work, I never want to. But when I go, I feel really good. And that gives me enough energy energy to put towards my creation. See, it's always about being in your awareness of the present so you can expand and you can get what you want, but don't live in a state of fear because you're overthinking, right? Because when we feel uninspired, we tend to feel like we're the choices are all over the place. Like everything is kind of an illusion. We're not really sure what's the best choice. You don't need to know what the best choice is. All you need to do is let go of trying to figure it out. And then the best choice will appear for you. You see what we're saying? That's why it's really more so important about get familiar about how do you desire to feel? How do you wish to feel? And we can see here, cancer, that when you feel ungrounded and unstable, then you're, you go into control mode. So you try to make things happen and force things and think about things and over stress things. It happens to the best of us, right? And that's why we would say prioritize feeling grounded and at peace, right? So for instance, um, I like to eat raw foods, but if I eat raw foods that are like high in sugar, like really sweet, like mangoes and bananas and stuff, which I love, but if I eat them before my reads, I am just a stimulated mess. I don't even know what messages are coming forward, right? So I, I recognize, okay, well, that's not how I desire to be. So that's why we don't want to have attachments to things because sometimes our conditioning can interfere with us, right? I realize that if I eat eggs, I feel better. And it's like, okay, well, I once was raw. Now I'm eating eggs. What the heck's going on here? That's why we don't want to have conditions. Cause if that was the case, it'd be in my head. Oh, you're eating something from animals, which is such a huge conditioning program, right? Right. Versus wrong. Who's who determines that, right? You're we're all unique for us. That's why we invite you to break free of whatever you've been conditioned and really start to just, just start to uh, live off of how you desire to feel right. There's, there's no right and wrong ever. There's only about what's best for you. And that what's best for you comes from the guidance of your higher self, not the thinking mind of trying to figure it out. Your journey is always going to be guided by you interpreting what feels right 
right? And that's why when we go back to that dinner table, when your family's sitting down and calling you and you don't really want to do that, you really want to keep working, what's going to be best for the entirety of the energy, right? Showing up and being there and being present and then taking that little break from what you were doing and coming back with a fresh start after you've been rejuvenated by, by, by positive energy, right? And maybe it's vice versa. Maybe it's saying, setting your boundary and saying, you know what, I'm just going to keep working. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll do the dishes. Don't even worry. You know, something to keep the energy light, but you're always going to know what's best in that situation. But the name of the game is really tuning into what energetic flow feels right and not feeling that resistance when you think negatively about it. Right. And that's what it's about right now for you. But rest is going to be very important so that you can let go of those thoughts. Now, your angels are coming forward with the message here of giving and receiving. So they are saying to you, the entire universe operates in cycles similar to your inhalations and exhalations. When you only exhale or give or only inhale, receive, you become out of rhythm with the universe. For optimal health, energy, and replenishment, balance each inhalation in your life with an exhalation, right? And so that means if you're if you're, you know, busy taking care of the kids and, and you have a service industry job, you're a nurse or you're a healthcare worker or, or something along those lines or, or, you know, anywhere where you're servicing others, you got to service yourself too. You got to service yourself too. And we don't want to because we're exhausted because we've been serving all day. But the name of the game here is to make sure that in order for you to feel replenished, in order for you to have your truth and know your answers, you do got to give back to yourself as well and respecting and honoring what your needs are. And that's why when we have a daily practice of meditation, a little bit of movement in nature, it helps us to get back to our truth and really uh, replenish and get back to ourselves. We love you so much. We hope you enjoyed your reading. We hope there were messages in here for you. And if there was, like, share, and subscribe. We truly appreciate you. Spirit loves you. I love you. And until our next reading, keep shining, baby.